So welcome again, all of our eighth grade families. Um, thank you guys so much. I know this is a little bit of an unconventional way uh, to start the school year, but we are really happy to host you at least for this virtual um, visit tonight since we couldn't get to see you guys at the grade schools. Um, I am gonna start though tonight with Mrs. Crossan. Um, she actually is one of my amazing assistants in the admissions office, but she's gonna talk to you guys tonight from a parent's perspe perspective. Um, once we introduce all the panelists, um, Mr. Gennaro and I will talk administratively and then we will allow for questions to um, be answered. But Tara, why don't you start? All right, hi, my name is Terry Crossan and I am a parent of a current sophomore at Archbishop Carroll and a, a parent of a graduate, a junior, who's now at the University of Scranton. So um, I've been around for a long time. I also have been the Carroll Candy Lady, uh, which hopefully I will be again. And I've worked at the Patriot Store, which uh, I hope will be up and running soon. So, you know, um, hopefully if, if you eighth graders are able to either come see us in the spring or come see me next fall and uh, come on up. I'm sure I can occasionally slide you uh, at least a free lollipop or something. So anyway, but from a parent perspective, uh, I feel like I have a, a great take on Archbishop Carroll as good as any parent could when their child goes to high school, just because of the fact that I've watched my son go through golf and baseball, my daughter go through crew. Um, my daughter Kat's also in Project Lead the Way, where she's taking engineering courses right now, which I absolutely love. Uh, my children, Dan and Kat, are very different from an academic and a personality standpoint, yet um, Carol's been able to bridge the gap for both of them. The common denominator, I think, for both of my kids is I don't have a problem getting them up in the morning to go to school. And, you know, I can honestly say not a problem when they come home. They're happy to tell stories and both have a common thread of friendships uh, and i think that's what carol does for kids it provides kids the opportunity to meet their group i actually was talking to another parent today who has a freshman at carol that i knew through grade school at saint mary magdalene and she was so excited to tell me that her daughter had found her crew and i love that when you find your group of friends that core group it it just keeps it going so my experience has been absolutely great. I don't feel the need that I have to get involved much with it because the kids feel very comfortable talking to the teachers, talking to the administrators, and talking to their friends. So it's been uh, a wonderful experience for me. For Dan, it was a game changer. Um, when he came out of grade school, I don't think he had much confidence. And he came to Carroll, jumped right into golf in the fall, and made a group of friends and carried that through all those four years and now beyond. He actually, his roommate at University of Scranton is also a 2018 Carroll grad, and um, it's gonna be lifelong friends. I said in the other Zoom that I did before, um, the only problem is Dan's gonna probably be in 2025 weddings because of all the friends he made at Archbishop Carroll. So if that's the worst problem that we have is buying a lot of gifts, that's a, a good problem to have. Um, I, I love the vibe of the school. I love the feel of it. And even when we were out in March, um, when, when we had to go to virtual, uh, you know, Kat came down the one day to grab her coffee before she started her morning um, because she needs coffee before she starts her morning. And uh, one of the first things Kat said is, you know what, mom, you know what one of the things I miss? And I said, what? And she goes, the smell of Carol. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. And, and so I said to my son, I'm like, oh my God, she misses the smell. And he's like, I get it, I totally get it. And so it's just something about that school. It's just that you even miss the smell, which I'm not sure what that means, but apparently it's a good thing. So um, I, I feel like if, if any parents have any questions, I, I'm a good one to go to. I've been around now for uh, set almost seven years, believe it or not, because it goes in a blink. So, um, you know, and, and because I've been pretty much involved in everything that there is there, I've watched my kids be involved in. So feel free, reach out, contact me either through the admissions department or um, Michelle has my email. You're more than welcome, but good luck in this, this nice ride, this nice journey. And uh, hopefully you'll realize why Carol too, why you want to come to Carol. Thanks, Terry. Um, 
So I'm going to now start to induce or introduce some of our student ambassadors. I'm going to start with Megan Smith, because I believe, Meg, you are the oldest on here. So why don't you kick us off? Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a senior this year at Carroll. Um, I've participated in cheer and student ambassadors, community service, and I've helped with campus ministry. My favorite thing about Carroll is the people there. Um, I was the only one from my grade school who went to Carroll, so it was like a really fresh start. I didn't have any friends at Carroll at first, but now as a senior, I have too many friends. It's hard to keep track of them. Um, I chose Carroll as an eighth grader because my sister went there, and so did my brother, but he, um, he had a different experience than my sister did, and I was kind of nervous going in. Um, but I loved it. I fell in love with the school right away, and I heard all the great things about my sis that my sister told me. Um, and my best advice for a future freshman is no matter like what school you go to, to get involved because it really helps you and it helps you meet new people and just really get yourself out there. Awesome. Thanks, Meg. Derek, why don't you go next? Hi, how are you doing tonight? My name is Derek Banks Jr. I'm a current junior at Archbishop Carroll. And I saw Archbishop Carroll, I didn't really know about the school until I got to about seventh or eighth grade. And once I started to get to know people that worked at this school, I started to understand the feel of Carroll. It feels like a giant family because I'm involved in track, soccer, game club, student council, and student ambassadors even. So it's getting involved is definitely a, a huge part of your high school experience. And that's one thing they, they will tell you, we will all tell you to get involved because that's the only way to make this, your high school experience fun. And I think that like being a family and being one at Carroll is very unique and you won't find that in any, any other school in the area. And I think that's why Carroll is definitely the best year. Awesome. What advice do you give just to get involved, Derek? Is that your biggest advice to the eighth graders? Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right, Caroline, why don't you guys go next? Or you go next, sorry. Um, hi, I'm Caroline. I'm a sophomore at Carroll. Um, I'm involved in soccer, track and field, best buddies, and community service. Um, my favorite thing about Carroll is definitely like the people there, all the teachers and all the people that you meet. They're all so nice and so welcoming to you. And you feel like it's really like a second home. It's like a great community. Um, I chose uh, Carol as an eighth because both of my brothers went there and like I was always at Carol for like games and events and I really just felt like it was like it's going to be a great place for me to go there and I was going to meet a lot of new people and have a lot of fun there. Um, my best advice for an eighth grader is definitely to like step out of your comfort zone, comfort zone and try new things like new sports and new clubs. Like I met my friend group from soccer and we started in like August so I was already going to school with a great group of friends. Awesome. Thanks, Caroline. And last but not least, our freshman. And we also have another parent rep um, on with him. So Michael and Karen, why don't you guys go next? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so Michael is a freshman um, from St. Bernadette's originally. And um, we definitely did our research and our homework when it came time to choose a high school for Michael. Um, after touring Carol and then our interaction, especially with Michelle and the rest of the staff, um, it almost instantly felt like home to him. Um, everybody was so warm and welcoming. The campus was amazing. And so far they've done such a great job with the hybrid um, where the kids are able to interact and be on campus. Um, Michael is enjoying fantastic grades right now. Um, his teachers are wonderful. Um, and he really seems to be happy. Um, much like uh, Terry had said earlier, it's not difficult to get him up in the morning and that's a first for me. So um, I think he's looking, you know, he actually looks forward to it and he does come home every day and tells me all about his day. Um, I'm gathering as a parent, it's just a very good environment for the kids, not only to learn, but as um, Derek had mentioned, I think, Michael's realizing that it very much feels like a family. And uh, as a parent, I, you really can't put a price tag on something like that, so. Awesome, yeah. thanks. And Michael, yeah. tell us, you know, so far, what have you gotten involved in and what advice do you have for some of your, you know, friends who are now eighth graders at St. Bernadette's? 
Um, since the pandemic is happening, there's not really much happening, but what I look forward to doing is uh, crew and uh, baseball if this pandemic does go away. And oh, boy. <laughs> excuse me, what I have advice for my eighth grade friends is just enjoy your time at Bernie's now and then high school is a totally different like perspective. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. So next up, um, before we start answering some questions and I talk more along the admissions um, side of things is Mr. Gennaro. He is our assistant principal for academics. And I always say the glue that really keeps us all together at Carroll. So Mr. Gennaro. Thanks, Michelle. Um, as she said, my name is Bill Gennaro. I'm the assistant principal for academic affairs. As you can see, I am coming to you live from my newborn son's nursery um, that he'll be using very shortly. Um, I have a three-year-old daughter and now a th one, almost one-month-old son at this point. Um, so my job at Archbishop Carroll is the assistant principal for academic affairs. Um, but my background at the school has come from a long time back. I've been at the school for about eight or nine years. Um, first as a coach, starting the boys and girls rowing program about 10 years ago before turning that over um, to my brother and the other coaches. Um, I was a teacher um, in the English department and still teach um, one class of English each year. Um, I actually taught uh, Megan, who you heard from earlier tonight, and uh, even during Derek's freshman year, I still I taught Derek a little bit part-time in a couple of his classes as well. Um, if I go back and count, uh, there's been someone in my family, whether it's been my mother coaching, my aunt working there, or one of my four sisters attending school at Archbishop Carroll for about the last 25 years. Um, and now it's sort of continues to run in the family. As I said, my brother is coaching the crew team. I'm in my position and my sister is also one of the freshman English teachers there. Um, so um, I love the school. I love, I love the atmosphere. Um, it pulled a St. Joe's prep guy out of the city and brought him back to a school that he didn't have much of a person of initial connection with and has made it my second home. Um, speaking to some of the families from the areas that we're, we're looking at tonight, um, plenty of connections with some of those. My family is from St. Bernadette's Parish. Uh, my parents live right off a of township line over there. My dad and I actually coached seventh and eighth grade football over there for about five or six years. Um, my uncle is the head of maintenance over at Sacred Heart. So if anybody knows Mr. McGann, um, that would be him. Um, and same thing, a lot of connections with St. Dorothy's, St. Andrews and St. Lawrence um, over the couple of years from growing up in that area. Um, so my job, and, and I would meet the incoming freshmen basically as we get to the summer. Um, as we finish up with the school year and I wrap up with the report cards of the current students, um, I'll sort of turn my attention towards the incoming ninth graders. Um, and, and as we look to place students, as I say, in the classes that are going to best um, allow them to succeed as freshmen, we take a look at a number of different things that Michelle will have you guys submitting. Your seventh grade grades, your eighth grade grades, um, any Terranova scores you may have. Um, gets submitted as well. If you take the scholarship test, um, that data gets looked at. And then also the placement test, which I'll speak about in, in a few minutes. Um, mainly as a freshman, almost everyone's going to take pretty much the same six courses. Um, you're going to take an English, a theology, a math and a science, a world history, um, a world language, whether it be French or Spanish, those are the two that we offer. Um, and then your seventh option might vary. Um, everyone's required to take um, health and physical education. So that option is there as well. Um, we also offer um, art, choir, and band freshman year if a student wishes to take them. Um, a student can be in band and choir all four years. Same with art. Um, we would just defer that health and physical education credit a little further back. Um, and then as Mrs. Cross had mentioned earlier, um, Project Lead the Way is another option. This is our second year with this engineering-based program. So this year's freshman, this is our second cohort of about 25 students. Um, Basically, it's four years worth of an extra science class, an engineering class taught by one of our science teachers, Mr. Ron Cummings, who has a past background previous to teaching in chemistry and engineering. Um, the first two courses are basic introduction to engineering, introduction to engineering design, and then we'll branch out with some different elective courses um, as students get to their junior and senior year. So it is a program that we allow students to start as a freshman. Um, and they can continue it for four years. And again, we just defer that health and physical education credit a little bit further down the line. Um, again, about 25 students in each, in each, in each of our cohorts currently. Um, there is one other option um, that can replace a class on a roster. Um, for students that have academic modifications and accommodations, we offer a, um, 
a academic skills and mentoring program that a student can take for more than one year, but we have it on there for freshman year that allows students to get accustomed to their rostering and their classes and stuff like that. Um, Mr. Chris Freiberger runs our resource department and helms up that class. So a course like that would replace world language on a student's roster and we would just defer the language to sophomore year. Um, while language is important and, and a lot of colleges are looking to, see, we're required to take three, two years and a lot of colleges are looking to see that third year. Um, it's still possible, but we like getting students set up in their freshman year with that language course. Um, starting sophomore year, we can start to see some variations in, in our rosters as we move forward. Um, sophomore year offers our first option at an advanced placement course in APU US government. We offer 13 or 14 AP courses um, throughout the year, depending on the year. Some are only offered in alternate years. Um, that is actually one of the courses that I, that's the course that I still teach. I teach AP language and composition um, to our juniors. Um, other electives that become available for students as we go forward are in a number of different areas. Um, in fine arts, we have courses like digital design, and digital photography and ceramics, along with our studio art. Um, in our business and technology department, we've got accounting, personal finance, broadcast journalism, and computer programming, to name a few. And then there are some electives in our core class areas, um, psychology, and so, so psychology, sociology, and human geography, all fall under the social studies department. Um, and then this year, for the first time, we're offering a course called um, Intro to Journalism and Creative Writing. Um, that course ties in a lot with our online newspaper, The Carroll Times. And the students in that class will also do some work with their um, with the school's yearbook. So those are all options that you can look forward to after completing a lot of your those core requirements in your first year or first two years. Um, so again, your, your timeline that you're looking at right now, and, and Michelle's going to talk a little bit about this in the next few minutes, um, is we're right around the time of the scholarship tests and everything. Now, um, from there, um, if you decide to come to Carroll and you're interested in taking one of our placement tests, um, placement tests will help sort of guide our direction for students and, and where they should start. So if you're in an honors algebra program currently in eighth grade or an honors math program, you would be taking our placement, our honors algebra placement test to potentially place out of algebra and start in geometry. Um, or you may take it in, um, in a world language um, if you're familiar with a language and you wanna test up a level in that as well. And then ultimately over the summer, um, next summer is our, I guess you'd call it our course selection process where you'll get some communication from me that will sort of allow you to select that one elective. If you're gonna defer the health and PE and you wanna take one of the arts courses or be interested in Project Lead the Way, we sort of gather that information over the summer. Um, so again, as, as everyone else has said on here, um, and I'll echo with it, I mean, Carol has, has become my second home. If you ask my wife, sometimes it's my first home with the amount of time that I might spend there. Um, but it, it's, it's all absolutely well worth it. Um, I wouldn't have come 10 years ago and started the rowing program um, if I didn't get the nudge from my parents um, and I sort of showed up and, and I've moved from there to the classroom to the administrative offices. Um, I'm very much looking forward to answering any questions you guys might have tonight, as well as um, looking forward to meeting you guys soon. Michelle. Thanks, Bill. Um, so, um, like everyone has said before, I, you know, I do go into my admissions piece. Um, you've heard a lot about family and getting involved and, um, a lot about legacy where that would be, you know, students who are coming to Carroll cause you know, like Mr. Gennaro has his long legacy of Carroll student or family members and some of our student ambassadors as well. But in admissions, we kind of look at legacy as something else. Um, we, want, we want students, I guess I should say, that to come to Carroll to leave their own legacy. Um, our slogan is leave your legacy. So um, when you're hearing you know, our kids talk and you do you know, get to actually experience Carroll for the first time, think about what you wanna leave behind as a student. And if Carroll's the place that you want to do it. That's what I always, you know, tell um, students when I'm talking to them, especially one-on-one -on -one is what can you bring and what can you leave um, for students? Again, you know, you might be sitting on this Zoom or hopefully in the classrooms next year um, visiting, you know, the, the new eighth graders or in years to come, like, you know, Megan's a senior and uh, she's done a couple great school visits. So that's what I always refer to when we talk about legacy and admissions is there's so much, you know, that's waiting for you at Cal Carol, but we want to know what you like and we want to see what you want to leave behind um, for other students to experience. So I also urge every student to take that into consideration too, um, you know, when deciding um, and really 
looking into schools. Um, I always say, don't just go where your friends are going um, because guess what? You're gonna miss out on making some awesome new friends. Uh, the best part about Carol to me is that we do pull from so many different schools and so many different areas. Um, Carol actually represents five surrounding Philadelphia counties, um, Chester, Montgomery, Delaware County, Philadelphia County, and even Berks County. Um, we have had students also that come to Carroll from other states like New Jersey and Delaware. So it's just, um, it's just a really unique place, I think. Um, and this is my third year in admissions at Carroll, but I did come from working at two other schools um, in admissions as well. And it just, there's, there's something very different um, about the culture at Carroll and the community and the family that these guys were talking about. So I do always just, you know, like to throw that out there as well. Um, in regards to admissions, and as I'm talking, um, please, like I said at the beginning, feel free to drop questions in the Q&A. There is no such thing as a dumb question, because I'm sure there were people that are thinking the same thing as you or wondering the same thing as you. And our students are on tonight to talk to you directly about, you know, what they've experienced, you know, through the questions you might have. Um, but as of right now, Carol has 220 applications for the freshman class, which I think is pretty good for, you know, our application uh, just being open for about two months now. Uh, we are still accepting applications. We will accept applications all the way through the springtime. So if you're on here tonight and you haven't done an application yet, that's totally, totally okay. If you have a friend and you know that they haven't submitted an application yet, again, totally okay. Please tell them to visit the website to do so. Um, also, the financial aid application is now open for the entire archdiocese um, or the archdiocesan school system. So that also can be found on our website. Just so you as a family are aware, no um, acceptance decisions or um, financial aid awards um, or even scholarship awards, which I'll get to in a little bit, um, will come out until at least December. Uh, so, you know, don't think that you have to rush off here tonight and complete everything. That's totally not the case. Um, so just be aware that that will, you know, start to trickle down as we get through um, the fall months and then even into the winter. Um, once you do complete the school application, um, you will be able to see in your portal on the school admin portal website, um, the documents that you will need to upload um, for a complete application. Um, I know some schools still would rather send Carol or my office um, specifically their record or your records as a student there. That's totally fine as long as they are sent electronically. Um, if you do have access to your seventh grade report cards and your sixth grade at this point standardized testing scores, please feel free to upload them directly um, right on your portal. Um, but again, if your school would rather send them um, to Carol, that's fine. We will upload them, but they do need to be sent electronically. Um, we do have two scholarship tests still left. They are virtual. Both are virtual. So um, if you are signed up for that, you will get information about what that will look like this year, the week before your test. Um, so, you know, don't think you've missed anything on that end yet. Um, there's still space and time to sign up for both of those tests. Uh, so please, if you are interested, don't hesitate to do so again once um, you know, we finish here tonight or even over the weekend. Uh, but be aware that you do need to submit your application to the school first. It does not need to be a completed application, but we do need to have an application on file for you before you take one of our scholarship tests. Um, the other three points that I'm gonna talk about are virtual experiences as well. Um, Hopefully this spring, we will be able to get kids back um, on campus for shadow visits, as well as family tours and maybe an even um, a spring open house. But right now we are limited to virtual events with the exception of a walkthrough tour. So our virtual open house actually will be dropping on our website. And since you are on here tonight, you will also get an email from me um, reminding you, but that will drop on Sunday morning, right on our website. You click on the link and it takes you to the virtual experience page um, of the Carol website and you can navigate through it as you choose. And that will be up on our website all week next week as well. So don't feel as though if you can't watch on Sunday, you can't watch it all. It will be up the entire week. 
At the end of that, you will actually have two options if you would like to schedule a walkthrough um, tour, which is about 30 minutes. Um, we are going to have the school open on October 17th. It's very strict guidelines though. Um, you know, it's very limited um, in regards to how many people, you know, we can have. So the details of that will come out. But um, if you would like to walk through the school, you are welcome to sign up for a time slot for October 17th. Um, that information, like I said, will come to you um, with the email for the virtual open house, as well as you will be prompted after the virtual open house to do so. Um, if for some reason we sell out um, of you know, slots, I like to say, we will potentially petition for another walkthrough day, um, but that is something that um, as an administration, we do have to talk about as well as get it cleared you know, with the Office of Catholic Education downtown. Um, so I hope that there is. I mean, I, I would love to have as many people you know, walk through as possible, but we do have to you know, take things into consideration. The last thing um, that's a virtual experience for the fall, at least, will be our shadow visit. Um, our student council president actually filmed a day in the life of a Carroll student. Um, this week and um, at the end of next week, we should get it put all together and it'll be listed for you. But at the end of your um, virtual open house experience on Sunday, you'll actually be able to schedule, I like to say schedule uh, your tour by just letting us know that you are interested in getting that um, video. Um, so that'll be another option for you guys as well. The best thing that you can do right now um, regarding admission season is to visit our website. There's so much information there for you, especially on the Carroll um, admissions pandemic information page. And that is um, right at the top. There's a big C, um, kind of like my C here, um, at the top of the main page um, of the Carroll website that you can visit. Um, and that gives you all of the information that I just talked about um, as we go through this fall admission season. So please, you know, make sure you do uh, check that out at some point too. Um, I am gonna read some of these questions now. We do have three. Um, so if you are on and you do have questions, uh, please do um, ask them. I will also ask some of our students to touch um, on some of the things they talked about. A couple students mentioned campus ministry and community service core and also best buddies. Um, so I will ask them to, you know, kind of explain those a little bit. Um, and then if anyone does have any athletic questions or, you know, band, choir, music, you know, whatever you can think of, whatever you like, please don't hesitate to ask as well. So our first question um, talks about how many people in the freshman class and then classes, as well as the whole school. Um, so in the whole school right now, we have about 620, 630 students total. Um, there was 147 uh, freshmen in the grade this year. And then Mr. Gennaro, it's 16 right now and yeah. in a grade or in a class. Yeah, so, so the, 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 the class size question in a, in a quote unquote normal year, um, you're, you're gonna look somewhere depending on the subject area from about 15 to 28 kids overall in the class. Um, you will have some that are a little bit larger. Um, and then as you progress through your four years and, and the elective options open up, some of the class sizes will shrink a little bit. Currently, um, as we are in our hybrid model, um, the maximum amount of students that we will put in a classroom is 17. Um, that allows to keep our six feet of social distancing, allows for the teacher to have their space up in front. Um, and and there, are, there are a handful of classes there at 17. A lot of them still fall in, in that, again, in, in a little bit of a lower range than that. Um, so that allows us to keep the students about half and half, like Michelle said, around 310 to 315 in the building on a daily basis. Great. Thanks, Mr. Gennaro. Um, the next question that I did see um, was about what school districts bus to Carroll? Um, and that is the same every year. Um, a school district that is within 10 mi a 10 mile radius of Carroll will bus you from the school district. Um, so it is um, school district line to school district line. Um, so I think we go as far south as uh, Wallingford Swarthmore and then out to Montgomery County is Methacton, I believe. Correct. Well, 
Um, and then we do have a private bus company that we work with for students that um, do not fall in that 10 mile radius. And that's the SAG bus company. And they do bus um, students in from di all different areas um, to include Roxborough, um, Maniunk, um, some places down in Chester, as well as Philadelphia. Um, so we do have that option as well. Um, and then what's really cool about Carroll is we have a train station that's located um, very close to our campus. Um, so if, if any of you students do want to talk about that and your experience with taking the train, please, you know, jump in. Um, and um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much about it with the buses. Um, and then um, yeah, SAG buses I talked about. So yeah, so that's, that's it. <laughs> Anything you want to add, Bill? Yeah, Michelle, we also, um, the Norristown High Speed Line is also uh, just on the other side of the train station. Uh, Derek, is that something that you take? I can't remember. I remember driving the van last year a little bit. So, based on my experience, we have a few different main routes for SEPTA. We have the 106 bus that goes back to 69th Street, the regional rail, which takes you down to Center City, and then the Norristown High Speed Line, which can take you to 69th Street or Norris, Norristown Transportation Center. Great. The, and the, you find it pretty easy, Derek? Yeah, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a far walk. It's like a 10 minute walk roughly to the Norristown station. And then and for the regional rail, it's about like a five minute walk from, from campus. And it, it, it's, and we, all, we also have student passes, so you don't even have to pay. So it, it's very convenient. Great, thanks Derek. Yeah, and usually we have a, a shuttle van that will pick students up at the, at the Norristown High Speed Line train station and bring them up. Um, currently it's not possible with the, our, our guidelines of the pandemic, but uh, the van is sitting on campus wrapped in its cow wrap, ready to go, and we are able to use it again. I see it every day. <laughs> um, so the time that students day start and times that it end. Um, so on a usual year, it's 740 to 225. Uh, does that, is that any different this year, Mr. Gennaro? It's, it's pretty close. Usually homeroom begins between 740 and 745. Um, this year, um, first period, if you will, starts at 750. Um, to allow us a little more time to complete our pre-screening process in the morning. Um, for the current school year, we have eliminated homeroom from the beginning of the day because it's one less place the students have to travel. So first period ends up being five extra minutes longer. Um, but no, the school day still ends at 225. Great. I did get one question about the two scholarship tests that I was referring to. Yes, that is the HSPT. Um, that is what the testing service that we use calls the test it is actually called the scholarship test at Carroll. So you can still register for the two um, tests that are left um, if you do wanna take one. Um, are there any questions for the students? Um, I know Megan and Caroline talked about CSC, community service. Um, and Caroline, you also mentioned uh, best buddies. So Megan, why don't you talk about community service and Caroline, um, you can talk about best buddies. So Meg, you can go first. So CSC or Community Service Corps is um, one of a cl the clubs that we offer and anyone can join and basically what we do is we set up service projects so um, a lot of times we'll set up like toy drive during the Christmas year or, or we'll organize um, one year we did we made peanut butter and jellies for uh, I think we someone delivered them to homeless shelters or in around us. Um, I'm not really sure I didn't deliver them, but I helped make them. Um, and we really just set up all the drives, like uh, diapers and baby stuff during Christmas time to just help people that are in need. And it's really fun. Like, it, you know, you're having fun while doing service because you get to be with your friends and you get to help people in need. Really Meg, are you part of Patriotthon at all, or have you experienced Patriotthon? Yes, yeah, so I've been to Patriotthon every year. Um, it's a really good time. So freshman year, I wasn't really a part of the committee, but I helped a lot. I helped with Thonaween, which is one of our big fundraising for Patriotthon. But I did attend it every year, and it's a lot of fun. Um, the what, first... what exactly is it? Can you? So I think. Right. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first two years I was at Carroll, we did um, the overnight 12 hours of dancing, and there's a lot of, like, fun activities, so, like, each hour has its theme, so there's karaoke, and there's Disney theme, um, 
and you just get to really just kind of have a big fun dancing. You stay on your feet for 12 hours and it's we like raise money. Nate's dance a thon, right? Mm -hmm. We raise money for a job and we get to hear stories from families. And it's just, it's really a lot of fun to hang out with your friends um, for a long period of time that you normally don't get to see them. And Carol provide, provides food and like drinks. And then the past year we did, I think it was eight hours or maybe less um, yes. during the day. <laughs> so that was a little bit better on my feet because I didn't have to stand for 12 hours. That was still a lot of fun. Great, awesome. That is one of our biggest clubs, I would say, at Carol. Um, so Caroline, why don't you talk about Best Buddies a little bit? Um, so Best Buddies is a club that Carol offers that we partner with the St. Catharines Day School, which is kids who have special needs. And we come, we come visit them, we come have fun, we like do specific events, like we went bowling last year, and we do like, we did trunk or treating last year as well, and we, they literally are the sweetest people ever, they always bring a smile to your face, and we just like to hang out with them and stuff. So for those of you that don't know, Carol actually has a school within our school, like uh, Caroline was just talking about, the St. Catherine's Day School, and it is for students um, of Catholic faith, or not even of Catholic faith, but that want to attend a Catholic school um, in the Archdiocese, and they do have special learning needs or um, any kind of special needs in general. And our students actually, you know, like Caroline said, get to, you know, partner with them and be their best buddy um, and do different things with them. And um, it's just really nice to see. They're very involved in our, you know, our, our school life, um, our school community, our masses on a normal year, I should say. Um, everything we're talking about would take place really in a normal school year, hopefully to Kind of come back to us in the, the spring semester. Um, and also, um, we have a, a, t a sports team that actually even partners um, with the St. Catherine's Day School, the Best Buddies program. It's called Unified Bocce. Um, so our Carroll students actually get to play bocce um, that you would usually see on the beach, um, but inside in a real, you know, court that's set up um, with the St. Catherine students. Um, so that's also something that a lot of students uh, take part in um, at Carroll and at St. Catherine's. And Michelle, to add on, um, aside from Caroline's involvement with Best Buddies, um, the Principles of the Exceptional Learner class is one of our electives for our seniors, um, where seniors basically get to spend one period almost working as an aide up in those classrooms and interacting with the students and gaining some of that experience. So for anybody that's interested in the education field, it really gives you a good insight into the special education portion of that. Um, we're still fortunate enough to be able to run that class this year, um, even with all the, the protocols we have in place. Students will be working virtually with the St. Catharines kids. Um, and then as we move towards the spring, we expect to be able to get back in the classroom with them. There is a question here to all of the panelists. Can you guys just tell everybody what grade schools you went to? Um, Derek, why don't you start? I graduated from St. Lawrence in, in the year 2018. Megan? Oh, I'm from St. Andrews in Drexel Hill and I graduated in 2017. Caroline? Um, I graduated from St. Andrews School as well in 2019. And Michael? Uh, I went to St. Bernadette's and graduated in 2020. Thank you, guys. Okay, so there are two more questions here. Um, the first one is for me. Um, it's just about the tests, um, the scholarship tests. Yes, they are both virtual. And yes, we do have proctors. Um, it was, it's usually me and Mr. Gennaro, um, maybe a couple other um, administrators or teachers as well. Um, the proctoring takes place actually on a Zoom. So you would have something similar to this setup. Um, and then you would be taking your test on the testing platform. And then the other question that I see here, it says, how does switching classes and classrooms work? I'm not sure if that is in regards to the pandemic or just in general. So Mr. Gennaro? We can, we can answer both. Um, so for, the, for anybody that has not been on campus, um, the building at Archbishop Carroll when it opened, I guess for what, 52 or so years ago, um, is a mirror image of itself. So because it was co-ed and separate, but separate when it opened. So you have two different academic towers um, and separating and two, two different gyms and separating them in the middle, you have your auditorium, your library and the chapel. Um, so the classrooms are traditionally during a regular school year broken up by subject area for the most part. 
with your English classes on one floor and one side, theology and one, social studies and so on and so forth. Um, this year, the classrooms got moved around a little bit um, as we are utilizing the cameras purchased by the Archdiocese of Philadelphia so the students at home can learn as synchronously as possible. Um, so we have cameras in, I believe, 25 classrooms at this point. Um, so as you're traveling from class to class, um, currently, um, there are 10 minutes in between classes. That allows for students and teachers to wipe down the desks and clean up the room before they are dismissed. Um, dismissal is staggered um, between the different grades so that even though we only have 310 or so students in the building, it, um, it limits the number of students in the hallways. Um, the benefit of the size also allows for us to turn some hallways one directional. So there is as little face-to-face -face passing as the students go back and forth. Um, so far, it seems to have worked fairly well. Um, there's signage all over the place to direct and mind, remind the students in case they forget. Um, in a regular school year, you're looking at about four to five minutes in between classes, um, and, and which is still enough time. These students move, but still enough time to get from, from one side of the building to the other if they need to. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions um, that you would like to hear from our students? Um, we do have a lot of athletes on um, tonight. Meg's also involved in cheer, um, like she said. So if you do have any sports questions, please don't hesitate. Um, I do want to touch on something that um, I always talk about as well. You know, first and foremost, Carroll is a Catholic school. Um, we are obviously part of the Philadelphia Archdiocese, but I think what's very um, unique to Carol is, you know, there's nothing that's forced on our students faith wise. Um, our campus minister, Father Mark will say, if he was here, he would say, you know, we really meet you where you are um, in regards to religion and in regards to faith. We have students that attend Carol that are not Catholic. Um, the only thing that is required is that you take four years of religion to graduate. Um, but other than that, um, you know, to take part in our lunchtime prayer services or our, you know, 710 um, masses um, in the morning, it's, it's the, the choice of the student. And these guys can tell you that a lot of students choose to do so. And that's what we really like, you know, about Carol is that our students want to be a part of the school community and even the faith life community. Um, we don't need to say, hey, you have to do this. Um, you know, Meg's talking about community service and how many people, you know, participate in the community service, right, Meg? You know, we do have a lot of different students from all over the place, you know, participating together. So I always like to bring that up. Um, that you don't have to be Catholic to come to Carroll. Um, there's nothing that is forced on you, but there's so much um, that, you know, you can get involved in, um, in your faith life, retreats every year, community service, campus ministry stuff, like we talked about, um, that our students all take advantage of. Um, and uh, Michelle, to add to that, um, through the campus ministry office, um, in the past couple of years, they've taken two trips or retreats, I guess, if you will, over the summer. One has been to the Steubenville Conference up in New York. Um, generally, students that are going into their sophomore year are able to attend that. Um, we've also taken a service trip down to Harlan, Kentucky, um, sort of part of the Project Appalachia, Appalachia program, if you will. Um, I, had the, I was fortunate to attend the first two years um, that we went, taking 20 students and four teachers down to do some um, work and volunteer work um, in, in what amounts to an impoverished coal mining town. Um, down there. So those are two items that uh, once permitted, we fully intend to start back up and continue. The question that I just had was about how many days a week do you practice for sports? So since we have all different sports on here, Derek, why don't you start since you, um, you know, do a couple, Meg and Caroline, and then Michael, I know you said you're looking forward to baseball and crew. Um, so I know you haven't really gotten to start yet. But um, why don't, um, Derek, you start. What do you play and how much do you practice? On so a year. <laughs> for soccer, we start in August and, the, and our practices for pretty much most sports in school are going to be every day during the week, usually from like 2.30, 2.45 to about 4, around that kind of time frame. Games will usually be on the weekend, sometimes during the week, depending on the sport, but usually practices will be. Meg, anything to add about cheer? So for cheer, we typically practice uh, three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and they're normally two to three hour uh, practices, but that's a typical week. Um, then during the football season, we cheer at football games on Fridays and basketball games, 
and we also are a competitive cheer team. So we additionally have Saturday competitions or Sunday competitions. And also um, just like for cheer, like in general on Sundays, Carol sends us to tumbling classes. So we can take classes outside of Carol as well as we get to go to Disney every year, which is super fun. Really enjoy that. Hopefully you get to go this year too. Um, Caroline, anything to add? I know Derek talked about boys soccer, but anything? <laughs> um, no, pretty much the same girls practice from 4 th 3.30 to 5, and our games are usually on the weekends. And we sometimes have weekend practices as well. Um, we have about five, six minutes left if anybody has any last minute questions. Um, Michael and Mom, I don't know if you guys want to add anything in there. Just cheering on your fellow eighth graders um, from, you know, your area or anything like that. If you do, feel free to jump in. Um, I did want to make mention of one real quick thing I forgot to mention earlier. Um, if any students out there have uh, like learning support, not issues, but if they require some learning support, um, that was also very much um, a huge factor in decision to send Michael to Carroll. Um, comparatively speaking, Carroll literally was the only school that was already equipped um, with their own department um, and you uh, mentioned Mr. Freiberger and that second period class. Michael um, has that in place of the uh, language arts class instead. So he's benefited tremendously from that. Um, I mentioned earlier he is uh, enjoying grades that he hasn't really before. So um, and everything he said is just kind of sort of clicking. So um, if there are any parents out there that have students that just need either, you know, a little support, a lot of support, um, you know, in, uh, you know, math and reading and things like that, um, Carol absolutely um, has everything already in place. Um, and that was a huge part of, you know, also why we decided to send public Carol. So there's that too. Thanks. Anything to last minute advice, anything you'd like to add, Michael? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, if there are no other last minute questions, um, I will end the session for tonight. Um, just to reiterate what I was talking about, um, please check out the pandemic information page of the Carol website. Um, it has all of the information that you'll need. Um, never hesitate to reach out to me directly. Um, if you are an applicant, you will get pretty much an email every week from me going forward. So please, I know some of them are lengthy, um, but it has all of the information that you need. So do read them um, and take note of, you know, what I am talking about. Um, and hopefully we will be able to see all of you in the, um, the springtime, um, or if not, maybe on our walkthrough day um, in um, two weeks. And also please enjoy um, the open house too, uh, starting Sunday and um, you know taking place all week. But thanks for joining us tonight. Um, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you to Carol if it is a school for you. So bye everyone. Guys, you can all log off, except for me and Mr. Gennaro. <laughs> you can stop recording. Oh, yeah. Um...